Now to our GMA cover story. The moment that changed Caitlin Clark's life, becoming the number one draft pick at the WNBA draft. The young woman who became the face of Morris Magic and who has rewritten the college basketball record books is here with us now. Good morning. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to know where to begin. You've had so much happen in the last few weeks this entire year, but take us to that moment last night. What was going through your mind? Honestly, I think it's super special and, you know, sitting at the table kind of obviously knowing where I'm going. You still get a little bit anxious when the commissioner walks out and says your name. It's something you dream of, like a moment I've dreamed of since I was in second grade and be there with my family at the table was amazing and to share it with them was super special. And let's take a look at this video of some of your teammates and fans reacting to you get, getting chosen as the number one overall pick. How did, how did that make you feel to see that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, some future teammates. I think it just shows the excitement in Indiana about not only basketball, but women's basketball. It's mm -hmm. a state that really supports basketball, so I'm lucky to be going to that organization. And um, you can see, like, there's a lot of people there in the arena, like, just for a draft watch party. Like, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> that's pretty so awesome. I can't wait to get there and actually be playing games. I know it'll be a packed crowd. Yeah, they're pretty excited. Yeah. We, our studio, by the way, is also a packed crowd today <laughs> because of you, Lee. Thank you. I'm wondering, though, what was more stressful, sitting there waiting for your name to be called or being on Saturday Night Live? SNL, and it's not week. close. I was so nervous. I've never been so nervous for something in my life. Basketball on the national stage, easy. But that was like, before they rolled me into the set, I was like, my heart was like pounding out of my chest, but it went okay. So and you've been the face of women's basketball, of March Madness, and been credited with really being the driving force and sparking this interest in women's basketball. How are you handling all the pressure? Honestly, like I feel like it's something that just comes with it, and honestly, mm. I don't feel a lot of it. I mm. think it's kind of just come with how I've carried myself and how I've, you know, gone about my business every single day. And I think that's what I try to do the most. But at the same time, like I always remind myself, like this is a team sport. I have a lot of people to rely on. Um, and then outside of basketball, like I always rely on my friends and my family to be there and support me. So I think those are the biggest things. Like I never really, at times you can definitely feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, but more than anything, like to me, like this is fun. Like it's a game, like just enjoy it. Like how lucky am I? Yeah, that is the right frame of mind. Just enjoy it. Yeah. And, and, and we have a special message for you. Oh gosh. Let's take a look. <laughs> That's scary, huh? Hi, Caitlin. It's Kathleen Dre, your old third grade oh, teacher. Just wanted to let you know how so proud of you we are all at, at St. Francis. Seems like just yesterday you were in my class. We are all cheering loud for you. My current students and I are now the biggest Fever fans. Go Fever! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. That was my third grade teacher. So <laughs> she had to deal with me in third grade and I was so competitive, so sorry to her, I feel bad. But, but the Fever is pregnant. She says she and her class and all the kids at your school, and how about all the kids out there? What kind of message do you want to send to them? Or what would you like to say to them about achieving their dream? Because this yeah. has been your dream as long as you can remember. Remember. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like just dream big and you know, obviously I went to the University of Iowa. I'm from Iowa. Like I kind of just bet on myself and I always believed in myself. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing from a young age. Like my parents always instilled confidence in me. Um, you know, they never told me I couldn't achieve something, but also like I worked really hard for it. Um, and I think that's what I'm really proud of is like I earned it. I deserved it and nothing was ever like given to me. Mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, more than anything, just believe in myself, and that's what I'm going to try to take to the next level. You know, you said you've had this dream since second grade. Where, what was the initial spark? Where did it first come from? Well, I grew up with an older brother and a younger brother, and I always wanted to be like my older brother. Like, whenever he was playing sports, like, I'd always tag around. I would cry all the time. Like, my mom did not like it. Um, like, I just wanted to be like him, and then my dad played college sports, too, so... Um, and he was my first ever basketball coach, so I would say like all of that. It sounds like you were born with that competitive spirit. We For saw sure. some video of you the other day. I think you were maybe second grade, mm -hmm. and your brother, your older brother, had learned how to ride his, his bike, bike without yeah. the training wheels. Mm -hmm. And so, was that something that you could just remember that that spirit of competition? From his young, uh, yeah, uh, for sure. Youngster. And I, I want to hear stories from your third grade uh, teacher. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I got kicked out of PE class like, quite a bit when I was younger. <laughs> Wait, Wait, you yeah, they had to have my parents come in and have meetings uh, about me being too competitive in PE class. So <laughs> that was something. But yeah, I think like growing up with a, an older brother, like he definitely pushed me. He never took it easy on me. And I think my parents could definitely tell from a very young age how competitive I was. Like the day he learned how to ride his bike, I was like. No, I'm doing that too. Like, mom and dad, take my training wheels off. Like, let's go. <laughs> that's, um, so it's, that's a cute little story. And but you, you said, you know, is there anything you are nervous about coming up? You, you, you seem like you take everything in stride. You seem so <laughs> calm. But is there is is there something you're a little nervous about? Honestly, like I don't feel like nervous. I feel like just excited and ready. I feel like it's the biggest thing is like I felt ready for this challenge, and that's why mm -hmm. I decided to leave college. I could have came back for another year, but um, for me, like I feel like my game is ready. I feel like from a mat maturity standpoint, like I'm ready for that. 
Um, I feel like there would definitely be some nerves um, once I get to Indianapolis, but um, at the same time, I feel like I'm definitely prepared for it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're ready for it. Yeah, we are. And we're, we're, so, we're so happy you came thanks. here and you joined us. Yeah, thanks for having and me. And we know it's a lot of excitement. You <laughs> need to get some sleep and everything yes. else and everything <laughs> that's going on. So, Caitlin, thank you so much. Give it up one more time. Yeah. Yes. And we look forward to watching you and the rest of the WNBA. Congratulations to you and all the young ladies who were drafted yesterday.